November 1, 2025, Hi, I'm Mike Thompson, and welcome to 121 Point Mike. This is Ground School. This video is the introduction on airport operations. On a test, you might be asked for the definition of an airport. An airport simply consists of the surfaces and associated buildings that are intended for use by aircraft. I'm going to divide airport operations into two major parts, the part on the ground and the part in the air. I think the part on the ground is far more complicated, and so I'm going to start with that part. That part occurs first anyway, and you aren't going to start being a pilot in midair, hopefully. I'm going to start with the ground segment of airport operations, and I'm going to divide that into two as well. The way I see it, the part on the ground there really only has two parts. It's the uh, signs and markings, and then the radio. I'm going to talk about the signs and markings first, and I'll cover the radio in another portion later on. I've read that a lot of people are afraid to talk on the radio, but I'm here to assure you that you needn't worry, because there's a very simple system and order of talking about things uh, that I'll get to in that video. All right, so on to the signs and markings and symbols. You're certainly going to have to know these things for a test, and so I'm going to cover the painted markings first, and then I'll do the signs. Let's pretend you're starting up on the ramp, and you're maybe near a hangar, and so we're going to deal with the signs in the order that you're likely to see them. When you first begin to taxi, you'll probably see a solid yellow taxi line. Now, some airports don't have their taxiway center lines marked, but if you see a solid yellow line, that's the taxiway center line. Some of the smallest airports don't have their taxiways marked at all, so just do your best, you know, to drive your airplane right down the middle of the pavement. The edges of the taxiways are marked by double yellow lines, and if you've been driving, then you know that you're not supposed to cross the solid double yellow line. The same applies here. You might see dash double yellow lines, especially at the larger airports. These delineate the taxiway portion from the ramp, or apron portion, where you'd go to park your plane. Nowhere in aviation documentation is anything referred to as the tarmac. This is just something that the media says to sound informed and cool. They tend to do that, unfortunately. You may cross the double dash yellow lines if you're headed there just to park or whatever. It's just not part of the normal taxiway. Now you might see dashed yellow lines running across the taxiway on your journey to the runway. These are taxiway holding lines. If ATC instructs you to hold short, which means stop, then don't cross that yellow line. An example taxi clearance might sound something like this. 121 Mike, you're cleared to taxi to runway 36 via Alpha, Delta, hold short taxiway Bravo, hold short runway 31. You'll read back those instructions. 121 Mike, cleared to taxi to runway 36 via Alpha, Delta, hold short taxiway Bravo, hold short runway 31. And you shall not cross the places where they told you to hold short until they tell you that you're cleared. Of course, you know, give them a call and tell them that you're holding short if you haven't heard from them in a while. The most important pavement marking you're going to need to know is probably the one that's in my logo. The hold short line. This is double solid on the taxiway side and double dashed on the runway side. Just like on the highway, you can cross when the dashes are on your side. These lines denote the entrance to a runway, and you may not cross these hold short lines unless you're given clearance at a towered airport, or at least look for traffic and announce your intentions and position at an untowered airport. These lines serve to create a buffer between the aircraft on the ground and the aircraft in transition. No one wants to collide, so these lines keep the runway areas clear. A runway incursion is a very bad deal and a frequent cause of accidents. Aircraft can only collide when they're in the same place. And if you stay apart, it's impossible to collide. Once you've been given clearance or announced your intentions, you may cross the hold short line. You may be cleared for takeoff or cleared to cross or cleared to line up and wait, which used to be called position and hold. Runways are white, taxiways are yellow. Watch 121 Mike and be a smart fellow. Taxiways have letters, runways have numbers. Know the difference so you don't make blumbers. Some of the runway markings aren't for new pilots, but I'm going to explain what they are because it's short enough to discuss here, and I'll revisit them more in an instrument video. Runway ends are marked with a fat white stripe all the way across, unless it's a small airport. About the only thing that all runways have in common, really, is the dashed white center line. They're supposed to also have solid white edge markings, but, uh, you know, Bud just might not allow for that. 
Just keep your plane centered on all paved areas and you'll be fine. Next to the fat white threshold bar, you might see a bunch of parallel white dashes, and these indicate the width of the runway. But now there's no linear relationship between the runway width and the number of stripes though. It goes from uh, four stripes at 60 feet to uh, 16 stripes at 200 feet. And of course, more stripes, the wider the runway, duh. When you come across the runway identifier, it's going to consist of a number and possibly a letter, depending on the number of parallel runways and whether or not it's located left, center, or right relative to the others. Now DFW is an exception here. They have five runways with exactly the same headings, but since the only letters are L, C, and R, they cheated a little bit and used the next number to identify the remaining two runways, even though the runways are supposed to be numbered according to their magnetic headings rounded to the nearest 10 degrees. After the runway identifier, you'll come across the touchdown uh, markings. These are groups of three dashed little stripes straddling the center line about 500 feet from the end of the runway. Keep going and you'll find large white rectangles at 1,000 feet from the approach end. These are called aiming points, but the 1,000 foot marks is what I hear most people call them. And you'll probably uh, be asked to land on those a few times by your instructor. If you saw the triple dash touchdown zone markings at 500 feet, then you're going to see double dashes at 1,500, 2,000, and then single dashes at 2,500 and 3,000, if there are, of course, runways long enough to accommodate them. These are touchdown zone markings and other markings that tell you the airport uh, has a precision instrument approach for that runway, which means you'll get lateral and vertical guidance. If you only see the runway width markings on the threshold, then that runway has a non-precision approach, which means you only get lateral guidance and you can't descend as far on your final approach. Of course, now you VFR guys don't need to worry about any of that, though. I just thought you'd want to know. Maybe you saw those white arrows leading up to the threshold. This means that the runway has a displaced threshold. It means that the runway is shorter for landing. Thresholds typically get displaced as housing or stuff gets built up around the airport. And of course, displacing the threshold further down the runway keeps the planes higher on approach than they would have occurred if the threshold weren't displaced. Uh, you cannot land before the displaced threshold, but you may take off in that area or use it for landing rollout on the opposite end. If you see yellow chevrons, that's not part of the runway, so don't use it as such. Just remember that rhyme about the colors from a bit ago? Yeah. You might be asked about uh, demarcation bars, blast pads, stopways. These are yellow areas and they're painted as such. Big chevrons that go all the way across uh, serve as blast pads during takeoff or emergency overrun areas uh, on the other end. Sometimes a taxiway becomes a runway and it'll be marked like this. All this color coding information is in chapter two of the aeronautical information manual. There's a lot more in there than I could possibly put in these videos. And these are the basics of pavement markings and should get you 99% of the way on your test. Now let's cover the signs. Signs are everywhere. Blocking out the scenery, breaking my mind. You'd better know how to read the signs. Of course, if you see the sign, it'll open up your eyes. Now let's go back to the parking area and work our way toward the runway again. Taxiways have letters. The taxiway you're currently on will be a yellow letter on a black background. These are location signs, and the sign will be off to the side of the runway a bit. You might also see the letter painted directly on the pavement. It's probably cheaper that way. You'll also see taxiway direction signs along with the location signs. These will tell you which direction to turn to get to that taxiway. They're located off to the side, but immediately before the intersecting taxiway. The direction sign will have an arrow to point you the right direction, and its position relative to the location sign will tell you whether it's a right or a left turn. If it's a simple intersection, you'll see a sign like this, where Echo is crossing Alpha. Let's look at an example of a direction sign. If you turn left, you'll be on taxiway Mike. You're currently on India. A gentle right, and you'll be on Kilo. And a hard right, and you'll be on Echo. You might also see other things listed, like runway directions or FBO locations on these signs. If you see a dot between letters or numbers on a direction sign, it reads like an AND sign. So don't sit there trying to multiply 17 and 15. Just go that way to get to either of those runways. When you get to a runway and the hold short line, you might see a hold short symbol on a sign. You'll probably also see the flashing yellow lights like a train sign, but in yellow. Along with the hold short, you're going to see the runway entrances sign. It's red with white letters. It tells you which runway you're about to enter. 
Also, it tells you which runway is which. Looking at the sign like this, you turn left to get to runway 18 and you turn right to get to runway 36. If you cross the runway and look from the other side, then you'd see that the numbers were reversed. You might be shown one of these signs on a test and asked which way you would turn to get to the runway. Once you're on the runway, you might see a runway location sign, which would look like the taxiway location sign but would have a number on it. You're more likely to see runway remaining signs, which are white numbers on a black background. These tell you how many thousands of feet of runway you have left before you run off the end. Well, I guess that's about it for signs and markings. Uh, check out the AIM for a lot more information. It's also much more interesting than the FARs, and I highly recommend it. You're going to need a copy of the most current FAR AIM anyway for your studies. Probably not this version, but uh, pick it up and start reading. Read the FARs if you're having trouble sleeping at night. The links for this online versions are down below in the description. And I think flying is just about the most fun thing you can have. So I hope you feel that this is the best video out there to help you on your flying journey about signs and markings. Go ahead and subscribe so that you can be notified when the next video is out. It doesn't cost you anything. And stay with me on 121 Point Mike.